July 31, 2022 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time Saint of the Day, Saint Ignatius Loyola First reading A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes Sheer futility, Kohelet says Sheer futility, everything is futile for here is one who has labored wisely, skillfully and successfully, and must leave what is his own to someone who has not toiled for it at all. This is futile too, and grossly unjust. For what does he gain for all the toil and strain that he has undergone under the sun, since his days are full of sorrow? His work is full of stress, and even at night, he has no peace of mind. This is futile too. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew but by evening wilts and fades. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord, our God, be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. If today you hear his voice, harden up your hearts. A reading from the letters to the Colossians. Since you have been raised up to be with Christ, you must look for the things that are above, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on things above, not on the things that are on the earth. Because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and He is your life, you too will be revealed with Him in glory. That is why you must kill everything in you that is earthly, sexual vice, impurity, uncontrolled passion, evil desires, and especially greed, which is the same thing as worshipping a false god. And do not lie to each other. You have stripped off your old behavior with your old self. And you have put on a new self, which will progress towards true knowledge the more it is renewed in the image of its creator. And in that image, there is no room for distinction between Greek and Jew, between the circumcised and uncircumcised, or between barbarian and Scythian, slave and free. There is only Christ. He is everything, and He is in everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. 
The Gospel of the Lord according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. A man in the crowd said to him, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. He said to him, My friend, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, Watch and be on your guard against avarice of any kind, for life does not consist in possessions, even when someone has more than he needs. Then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man who, having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, What am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, My soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy. Eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul, and this horde of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when someone stores up treasure for himself instead of becoming rich in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Reflection The meaning of parable of the rich fool is twofold. First, we are not to devote our lives to the accumulation of wealth. The second is the fact that we are not blessed by God to hoard our wealth to ourselves. We are blessed to be a blessing in the lives of others, and we are blessed to build the kingdom of God. The psalmist says that if our riches increase, we are not to set our hearts upon them. The Bible says that the one who gives freely grows all the richer. Finally, the Bible says we are to honor God with the first fruits of our increase. The point is clear. If we honor God with what He has given us, He will bless us with more so that we can honor Him with more. So if God has blessed you with material wealth, set not your heart on it and be rich towards God.